This is Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, and a whole lot more. I trust today that you'll consider this like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, and leave a rating and a brief written review. I want to talk about a subject that everyone is talking about today, change. If we're going to change, where does it start? Um, rather than trying to change others, it was Leo Tolstoy that says, many people think about changing the world, but very few people think about changing themselves. And rather than trying to change others or uh, challenge others to change in our, in our own life, you set the example and how you live says a whole lot more than what you're trying to tell other people to do. So I want to start with this acrostic today, my leadership friends, and that is simply, if you want to change the world, you have to start by changing your Change other people. I don't know if you've noticed that. You can't make other people do what you want them to do. The only person you have any control over change is yourself. So we're going to come back to that theory many times. But by changing yourself, you can change your world. I'm going to give about 10 statements on this subject, and here we go. I think it's very appropriate for where we're living in the world today. Everyone wants things to change, and they must, and they should, and they have to. But we want someone else to do all of the changing, and we want to repent. We have to change. And so the very first thing I would say is be authentic. It's all right to just be who you are. God made you the way you are for a particular reason. So just enjoy and be the person that you're supposed to be. You don't have to be like everyone else. You can't be like everyone else, but we can be the best us that we can be. And so I think any time that I'm wanting to make changes in my own life, I have to be realistic and authentic and say, you know, this is just the way it is. Yes, I am like that. Yes, I have given myself to that. And I need life. So you have to start out being authentic. The second thing I would say is you have to be flexible. It's not one straight line from here. I here's what I want to change. Here's how I'm going to change me. And away I go. It doesn't work like that. It goes in fits and starts. And there are directions and then pretty well realize that really wasn't the direction I intended to go. And so you go another direction. It's all right to change. Remember, a wise person changes their mind, but a fool never does. So always remain flexible. You only know what you know today. You don't know what you're going to know tomorrow. Be out there for you in the future. You can only do what you can do today. The third thing I would say is don't compare yourself to others. This is sort of a disincentive to change. We see the gap between where I am and where I want to be. And we look at the highlights of other people's lives and we think they the road than we are. You only have control of you and you quit comparing yourself. You're not them, you're you. The fourth thing I would say in changing ourselves in order to change our world is we're more than likely going to have to really upgrade our skills. By that is, what are some areas, some holes, some blind spots in my life where I really need to learn some things? There are great books out on the market today. That there's, a, there's many of them that I would highly recommend on how you can make changes incrementally and small. You, you, you've heard me talk about Darren Hardy's The Compound Effect. It's an excellent book. And the second one would be Jeff Olson's The Slight Edge. I highly, highly recommend them. James Clear, uh, Automatic Habits, uh, Charles Duhigg's book on habits. There's also a brand new book. It came out, I believe, on December 31st by B Dr. B.J. Fogg from Stanford about habits. They are all, all excellent. And if you're looking for the way to really change your world, it starts with you and any of those books, all of those books would be a great addition to your library. First of all, you have to figure out what are my skills that need upgrading and then find the book, find the seminar, find the class, find a mentor, find a coach and just say, if I'm going to change, I know how to do what I'm doing today. I have the life experience 
Uh, I have uh, the friends, I have the experiences, but if I want to lead into the future, I'm going to have to upgrade my skills. Number five, um, don't use how hard it is to change as an excuse to not get better. It does not matter how old or young you are today, there's always more to learn, more to do, and we many people, it's not their failures that have done them in, it's their successes. If you've had a lot of success early on, that's wonderful, congratulations, but it could also become one of your largest hindrances. For people who have early, quick success, have a tendency to rest on their laurels and think that every circumstance and situation that they're ever going to face here on out is going to be exactly like that is. Things are changing too rapidly for any of us to rest on training. As a matter of fact, my leadership friends, one of the biggest things in your life today is not only there are lives that we need to unlearn, learn new ways and unlearn those. So don't use that change is hard, I'm old, I'm tired, da 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 as an excuse. That's any of those books that I mentioned because they talk about doing things slight edges, small changes that, over, that compounded over time lead to big results and big changes in your life. Don't focus just on you. I'm going to change. Lots of people, I have been involved in those conversations when a couple was having marital difficulties and time and time again, one of the persons would say, no, it's different this time. I'm really going to change. You don't change. Your actions have to change. It's not enough to hocus pocus. We will not change. I will not change until we change something we do daily, till we change our activities, our actions, those sorts of things. So quit focusing globally. I'm going to change. Get specific on what needs to change and then focus on the actions. And again, I would direct you back to the four, five, six books that I recommended any one of which would give you a great coaching session on how to implement what I'm talking about. Number seven, let's just acknowledge this. Changing is hard, but it's important. Now, we want everyone else to change. We used to change. We want uh, all kinds of folks to change. The fact is, are, do you have skin in the game? Are you willing to change? And believe me, at times it'll be some of the hardest work you and I have to do. We have to overcome training. We have to overcome some preconceived hard. Do not forget are the most important things in life. So change is hard, but it's very important. Don't forget it. The other thing is you'll get discouraged. There are days when you're not going to feel motivated. But remember this, do something. If you want to read, take, uh, take a goal that you have of, of reading a book a week, start off by just reading a paragraph. Just begin to form the habit of getting the book, opening it up, and reading a paragraph. Now, always remember something that's easy to do is also easy not to do. But don't just say, I want to read a book a week and I'm going to read one today. That, that will discourage you and demotivate you. Do something. If you need to exercise, the block. Get started. The enemy is inertia and doing nothing. Um, it was Benjamin Franklin who said, none preaches better than the ant. And she says no word. Maybe people are tired of hearing us telling them how to change. They're waiting to see if there's going to be any change in our lives? Are there things in our lives that we are making the changes that we've told others to do? You see, your, your personal um, example will do more to impress upon people the need for change than all of the eloquent speeches you could come up with. So the other thing that I wanna say is, what is something, let, let's just give some practical tools here. What is something you're doing right now that you know you ought not be doing? Now, I'm not going to put the confessional screen up here today and allow you to start confessing your sins, but 
Every one of us, you don't need me to tell you, you don't need me to come into your house and coach you. There's not a person listening or watching today that doesn't know, doesn't even in your life that, that I need to stop doing. Let me give you some great advice. Stop doing it. Make up your mind right now. If I'm going to change, it's not because I talk about it. It's not because I think about it. It's not because I even go out and buy the books that Dr. Ron just told me to read. It'll option. And so stop the way that we can begin the change is to stop doing something that needs to be doing. You'll know what that is. I'm not just necessarily thinking about vices. Um, maybe, you, you know, I'm not going to get prescriptive because I could take the rest of the day. The, the next one is like that one. Not only uh, did I, what is one thing you need to stop doing right now? Are you willing to commit to it? You won't do it because I told you to. You'll only do it because you want to. Then let's be positive. Start doing something you know you should be doing. If it's exercise, just start walking around the block. If it's easy ways in which you can do that. If it's getting out of debt, saving money, reading the Bible, it, it could be a thousands of things. Just make up your mind today. You're going to start doing something. Again, you don't change you until you change something you do every day. And here they change, and they seem to be so unwilling to do so. And here's the thing. You can listen to this over and over again. You can get the books that I mentioned, and you can read them. You can get a, a life coach. You can do all sorts of things. You can find a mentor. All of those noble and wonderful things. But here's what I know. You will not change until you're ready to. Here's what I've discovered in working with people since 1981. Most people will not change just because most people won't even change when they know it's in their best interest to change. Most folks don't change until the pain point is so extreme that the, pa the pain of staying the same is worse than the pain of changing. Now, I'm just taking, I would admonish you, don't wait until you're in a grave situation or the pain of staying the same is so large that you really don't have a choice. Why not today make up your mind that you are going to begin to change. We want our world, our nation, our city, to change, but it starts with all of our hearts being changed. And it starts with me changing me. And then people will begin to believe what we say about change when they see the changes in our own lives. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership more. I hope today this has been like a vitamin or a supplement for your heart and mind. And wherever you receive podcasts, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, leave a rating and a brief written review. Remember, my leadership friend, you are doing better than you think you are. You really are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron and blessed day.